Eli Nevada to see Prometheus. Welcome to Nugget 385. Who on earth is Prometheus and why do you have to go to Eli Nevada to see him? Prometheus was a large bristlecone pine. In the textbooks our kids learn from, they say the bristlecone pines are perhaps the oldest living plants in the world. And this researcher apparently, supposedly, wanted to cut down one of the bristlecone pines to check its age. And the Park Service, Forest Service, gave him permission. And the story gets muddled, but part of it is that one of the Park Service forest rangers, who was going to be the one to actually cut down the tree, couldn't bear to do it. People, in hindsight, have now said that this gentleman could have taken core samples and not cut down the tree. There is so much legend and talk around this, and who knows what's real. But one of the things that I found interesting when doing some research on it is that the daughter of that ranger who would not cut down the tree she was at one of the celebrations they had like a birthday party for prometheus up on the mountain i just thought that was sort of neat back to what you were saying we have been to several bristlecone pine groves across this country well mainly out west out and west this one right here is the shulman grove another sidebar i like sidebars in this picture is likely the oldest bristlecone pine in the world the Park Service Forest Service does not identify the tree because people would want a souvenir. And why wouldn't they? That is just really neat. I think that it's best that they keep it hush hush which one. They tell you the general area and that's why we took this picture. Now this hike, it's not an easy one. It's a huff puff to get up to there. And but the, it's nice. And the road, the road is just as bad. Sometimes you can get to bristle cones very easily but sometimes it's quite the task, but it's worth it. It can be. It is so awesome to hike amongst these things at 11,400 feet, by the way. They prefer a high elevation, and that's one of the things that they survive in these elevations. And I do want to add that just because it's the biggest one that you're looking at doesn't mean it's the oldest. Correct. Once again, the textbooks say that the bristlecone pines, which are the oldest living plants in the world are only 4,300 years old. These bristle cones are at Cedar Breaks National Monument, and it's relatively easy trail, if you don't mind walking right next to the edge of a cliff. It was fun, wasn't it? Of course, it's Utah. Yes, right. We've also been to Great Basin National Park, where Prometheus is from, and its stump is still there, as a matter of fact. But it's a hike on Wheeler Peak. We did make it to the ancient bristlecone forest, one of them that is off of one of the trails, and it is a, quite a hike also. And as you can see, it was still cold. The weather there in this part of Nevada is quite brutal. We have wanted to go back to Great Basin on two occasions in the last several years, and as recently as a month ago, just can't get to it. The pass is not doable in our rig, but one of these days we'll get back and... One of the main reasons I like to go to these places is I want to pet one of these trees and touch these trees because these individual trees, many of them were alive when Noah was alive. Well, sure, because he lived way long after the flood, as you talk about in your longevity lesson. And if you haven't watched the longevity lesson, I want to encourage you to do that. If you're not a subscriber, could you please subscribe? Many cultures across this earth date the creation account somewhere between like 4,000 and 7,000 years, which is amazing. And then roughly around 4,400 years ago, there was a big flood. That's about how old these trees are. And I just find that amazing. The science of dendrochronology, tree ring dating, a crucial archaeological dating tool is wrong, and it could change history as we know it. One of the most important dating tools used in archaeology may sometimes give misleading data, a new study shows, and it could change the whole historical timeline as a result. They go on to say there are significant fluctuations in the amount of carbon-14, and it could force scientists to rethink how they use ancient organic remains to measure the passing of time. They say they have been maybe a little too hasty in assuming how the isotopes known as radiocarbon diffuse. There are discrepancies in the counts. Radiocarbon dating could be misrepresenting 
important details. They say carbon-14 is presumed to diffuse fast enough to ignore these little tiny bumps that they were talking about. At least that was the assumption until now. We know from atmospheric measurements over the last 50 years that radiocarbon levels vary through the year. So we wondered whether radiocarbon levels relevant to dating organic material might also vary for different areas. And they go on. The difference most likely comes down to changes in regional climate. Extrapolating the findings back to earlier periods, archaeologists attempting to pinpoint Iron Age or biblical events down to a few years would no doubt have serious need to question their calibrations. Down here, our work indicates that it's arguable their fundamental basis is faulty. They're using a calibration curve that is not accurate for this region. And this research was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. What I find interesting are two things. I'm wondering if they have a problem with dating these because it is proving biblical events. I think so. And also they're exposing that carbon dating isn't what it's cracked up to be. I can't stand carbon dating, but don't tell Steve that. Everyone asks you about carbon dating because they just throw that out there. And one of the things that's interesting is that if it isn't working for the scenario they're wanting it to work for, they say it doesn't work. But when it works for the scenario they do want it to work, they're 100% behind it. What we need to do is trust the Bible, not what these evolutionary scientists are coming up with with these dating methods. And some of the uh, detractors, I guess I could say, might say, well, we don't know who that article is from. Well, how about the University of Arizona? College of Science, Laboratory of Tree Ring Research. And they go on, they start the article with what is uh, dendrochronology and what do the tree rings tell us and why not just count the rings? Ring counting does not ensure the accurate dating of each individual ring. They say ring counting leads to incorrect conclusions drawn from inaccurate dating. Dendrochronologists demand the assignment of a single calendar year to a single ring. And it goes on and on. Variation in these rings is due to variation in environmental conditions when they were formed. I know that one of the things that they mentioned at the University of Arizona is when they were talking about Prometheus is they kind of um, dismiss this tree. They don't want to make a big deal about it. One day I hope to go over there and talk to somebody that's been there for a long time and and find out exactly why they're trying to dismiss the whole Prometheus being the oldest tree and its dates. I think that they're wanting to say that they can determine environment more than the age of a tree and that almost seems plausible because a dry year is a dry year a wet year is a wet year and a wet time frame because it it isn't just dry one year and wet the next it may be a period it may be just a season yeah or it may be a couple of years period. that's yeah. really wet. It may be right. seven years of drought, and the tree may have only gotten one ring because it didn't grow much. So I think it's kind of good that they're backtracking on some of this. But you know what? Most people think it's lockstep science. Oh, yeah. And when we went to Kosai, they had that big tree there. And if you go back and watch our nugget on Kosai, they had that big slab of tree cut. And then they would have the different years of with when that tree was alive and what event in world history occurred. And that is sort of cool to look at. It may not be as fine-tuned and accurate as presented. Well, it's not. It's not that way at all. Like I was mentioning, the the Bible is real clear. You can track the longevities in the Bible back all the way to Adam. It's only around 6,000 years. The flood was around 4,400 years ago. That falls right in line with where this is. In the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20.11, it says, For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Everything was made at that beginning. Jesus said in John 5, 46 and 7, if you don't believe what Moses wrote, you can't believe what I say, he says. Moses wrote Genesis. Moses wrote Exodus. Jesus said, Adam and Eve were here from the beginning of the creation. There is so much biblical evidence that what the Bible says is true is in fact true. They say in the textbooks again that evolution is the core of the science of biology and they use the bristlecone pine as an example. Well, if the example of what is a core is not correct, we got a problem. But anyway, we did go to Ely and we went to White Pine County Tourism and Recreational Board Visitor Information Building. Well, actually it's called the Bristlecone Convention Center and in here is Prometheus. 
This was really exciting. We walked in the building and the young lady came out of the office and we said, we want to see Prometheus. And she said, okay. So she took us into what would be a large ballroom meeting room. And they had Prometheus behind this glass. And because of the fluorescent lighting and the way the glass was, it was so difficult to take a picture of this slice of Prometheus. She said that this was the second display that they had established for Prometheus, and they were not happy with it. At some point in time in the near future, they would be remounting it. And I think that's a really good idea. As you can tell, it was so difficult it was hard to, to take see. an accurate picture. What the write-up they have next to this slab the slice, I should say, says, Bristol cone pines are small to medium-sized wind-blown trees ranging from about 5 to 16 meters. That's 15 to 50 feet in height. Bristol cone pines grow in isolated groves just below the tree line, between 5,600 and 11,200 feet, but are more highly concentrated above 9,000 feet. And as you saw with our GPS, it was over 11,000 feet when we were at the secondary grove there in California. The wood is very dense and resinous and thus resistant to invasion by most insects, fungi, and other potential pests. The tree's longevity is due in part to the wood's extreme durability. These are some rugged looking trees. The female cones are a void in shape and deep purple when young. After maturity, which takes about two years, the cones will mature to a pale brown and bear a characteristic bristle on each scale. The dark color of these cones helps to absorb heat. Bristle cone pines and Clark's nutcrackers are closely intertwined. The nutcrackers collect the tiny bristle cone pine seeds and store them for food. Oh, isn't that cute, a little Clark nutcracker? I want to see one of those. Sometimes the birds don't return to eat them, and these seed caches grow, emerging as clumps of bristlecone pines. Well, thanks, little nutcrackers, for giving these guys a break. And we took several pictures of the Prometheus slab and tried to put them together as best we could. It was, it was big and very hard to, to get a picture. Again, the glare was just ridiculous and they had part of it kind of snacked behind the the write-up that they had it isn't a good display no, admittedly by the, the lady that was there at the convention center but it was still cool to see it well this article does say that some say curry's increment borer the tool used to take core samples broke off in the tree some say that uh, he didn't know how to core a tree some say the, the borer was not long enough to go through the tree. It's a neat article. Pause the video and read it. But I will say also, we have been up to a Bristol Pine Grove in California, and it was over 10,000 feet. All the rock up there was filled with marine life fossils. And we want to swing around to this again. As we mentioned in a previous nugget about the Greek gods and mythology and Roman mythology, how they name things. As I mentioned, the Grand Canyon formations. You mentioned the planets and the moons. In Greek mythology, Prometheus is a titan god of fire. Prometheus is best known for defying the gods by stealing fire from them and giving it to humanity in the form of technology, knowledge, and more generally, civilization. All kind of interesting, isn't it? And once again, here is the largest bristlecone pine on earth. And they do identify this one. Yes. It's the largest, again, not necessarily the oldest. Great Basin National Park contains over 10,000 acres of Great Basin bristlecone pine and limber pine forest. That's amazing. The National Park is only 65 miles from where you stand. But as I mentioned earlier, Good luck getting there sometimes. You might want to try from the Utah direction, from Delta. And if you go to Delta, you can dig up toilet bites. True, and we've done that. I want to remind everybody that bristlecone pines reproduce bristlecone pines. The Bible says everything was made in six days and everything reproduces after his kind. And that is exactly what the evidence shows. We've got the truth on our side. Absolutely. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And pass our videos along to your friends and family. And hit that like button. Yeah, and, and make a comment. Absolutely. And if you have it seen... It helps the YouTube algorithm. And we need help on that we algorithm. Need help. Also, if you have visited a bristlecone pine forest somewhere out west, tell us where in the comments below. Thank you.